Hello and welcome to this week's episode. I'm Cassidy Cash, that Shakespeare girl, and today we're going to ask the question, did Shakespeare know about rhubarb? Rhubarb is an interesting little plant. It's the long red stalk and it's used very popularly in England today as a dessert food. You can make pies out of it. It has a very sweet taste and contains a lot of sugar. And I was reading an article on the BBC about how rhubarb came to England and their article made a mistake. Now, me and a friend of mine who is an expert in Tudor plants went investigating and here's what we found out. Rhubarb's medicinal uses began about 5,000 years ago. The Chinese were really big into rhubarb and they had a monopoly on it from the 1600s all the way up through the 1800s. And Western civilization didn't really start using it until about 2,000 years ago. And it was also very popular in Greek and Roman medicines. So the first place that people really started applying rhubarb to their diet and consumption was as a laxative. There is no record of the common culinary use for rhubarb that we think of it today until the 1800s. Marco Polo had written extensively in Italy about the Chinese rhubarb and its uses, and he wrote a lot about that. So it's my personal belief that William Shakespeare could have read some of the writings of Marco Polo. Now, while the culinary uses for rhubarb would not take hold in England until well after William Shakespeare's death, during the bard's lifetime, rhubarb was popular in England medicinally. It was used as a laxative, and it was known to some degree by William Shakespeare himself because he quotes the word in his play Macbeth. He says, what rhubarb, syme, or purgative drug would scour these English hints? That's Macbeth, Act 5, Scene 3. Interestingly, Shakespeare uses the spelling of rhubarb that includes an H, and some of his contemporaries who also wrote about the herb spelled it without an H, and there's a linguistic journey we could take there. So that is another journey you could investigate about the history of the word itself. But the article from the BBC suggested that rhubarb didn't come to England until the 1620s, which would be after William Shakespeare. And since he quotes it in the play Macbeth that was written around 1606, that made me wonder, well, where did Shakespeare learn this word? He could have read about it in some of the various works that he uses as source material, and that's still completely possible. But what we did when I went and asked my friend Brigitta Webster of the 17th century and Tudor history experience, which I will link to below this video, she is an expert in Tudor plants. And I went and asked her, are they right about this? Because this just doesn't seem accurate. Or there's at least a story here because Shakespeare is obviously talking about rhubarb. Where did he get it? And she replied with these really awesome resources. It turns out Thomas Tusser mentions rhubarb with no H in his 500 points of good husbandry from 1573. Now that is when William Shakespeare was, he was nine in 1573. So that is definitely within his lifetime. And this is an English person writing about this. So obviously England knew about it in Shakespeare's lifetime, but she didn't stop there. She went on to point me to two other references as well, both from the 16th century and one from 1597 called John Gerard's Herbal. Now his herbal is very famous and useful for a lot of things in historical research. So I encourage you to check that out anyway. But he references what's called monk's rhubarb. And both of these resources after Thomas Tusser reference it as monk's rhubarb, which suggests it was possibly being used in the monasteries of England before it was popular commercially. Now the leaves of this plant are poisonous. Don't eat the leaves. But I didn't know that in England during Shakespeare's lifetime. And so some people did actually die from trying to cook up the leaves the way you cook up spinach. So know your herbs before you eat them. But it seems that you should always investigate and ask questions when you find something interesting about history because you might find yourself fact-checking the BBC. That's it for this week here at That Shakespeare Girl. I'm Cassie Cash, and I hope you learn something new about the Bard. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.